Hello and welcome to Class Class, the show where we have a class about a class. So, today, let's get into rogues and see what kind of trouble we can get into. This is the first episode of this particular se series. This is an offshoot of my other show, D&D Stories, in which some of the episodes in which I talk about classes in particular seem to be the most popular, so I thought I would do like a side series in which I'm just talking about particular classes. Today, we're in the Pathfinder core book to talk about rogues, and a lot of this information can also be used for D&D 3.5. So, fantasy table topping in general, this Pathfinder covers quite a bit. So, rogues in general, a lot of people just think about rogues in terms of sneak attack, because, you know, that's that's like their, their fling, their, their Hmm. Their extra little thing that they have in battle that nobody else can do. Their specialty, sorry. And people that don't think beyond the battles, like, D20 is a combat system, don't get me wrong, but a rogue is not just the extra 1D6 or the extra 2D6 or whatever it happens to be at the time. There are several branches of rogues because, you know, sneak attack is now and then kind of damage, and a lot of people actually don't know the real definition of sneak attack to begin with. So what we're going to do, we're going to go through each of the, uh, the branches of what a rogue can be and then go on into like the hard numbers. So what all can a rogue be beyond just the uh, sneaking up behind you and stabbing you in the back for extra damage? Well, as I'm sure you know, rogues get tons and tons and tons of skill points. In fact, the yeah, the skill ranks per level, even in Pathfinder, is 8 plus their intelligence modifier. So, while you're building in terms of stats, more skill points is your intelligence modifier. So, that's where you want one of your high stats to be. The other being dexterity, because a lot of your stuff, you know, climb, sleight of hand, you know, things like that are all going to be dex-based. So, what kind of rogue can you have? You can have the um, the assassin, obviously, who's gonna have like, you know, climb. Um, what what kind of skills do they have? Climb, uh, intimidate, stealth, uh, sleight of hand, use magic device, things like that, where it'd be easy to just like you specialize in straight up killing a dude then yeah, you're a combat rogue. That doesn't necessarily mean you're, you're there in terms of stealth. Um, it is a plus, but most of the time if you're running around with a party of adventurers, then stealth is not going to be your friend. And if you go off by yourself and you get caught, well, you're pretty much dead anyway. Or if you need to send a rogue in to like do some scouting, what's everybody else going to be doing at the time but twiddling their fingers and wondering if you're dead or not, so... The, uh, the assassin rogue is just like straight up combat oriented kind of thing. He, he might specialize in a certain type of weapon, in a certain type of special attack, in poisons. You know, he might have like knowledge or craft alchemy in terms of doing just sudden burst damage or like stealth and then, you know, sneak up behind somebody, stab, you know, poison, alchemy, whatever you want to have on that, in terms of just sudden coup de gras kind of damage where they don't have any chance if you get the first hit in, things like that. Um, you also get what me and my friends used to call the face rogue, where you would be, you know, intimidate, diplomacy, bluff, uh, kind of a charisma-based character, but you're not quite a bard. You know, you're not interested in all that other garbage. You're you're kind of the, uh, like, the smooth talker or the con man or things like that. To where you're, you do all the talking, you know all the fences, you might have, like, knowledge local, you might have uh, disguise so you can be other people, you might have, you know, bluff, Tons of diplomacy, you got to have like a high charisma score, you know, so you might be handsome and or beautiful, you know, things like that, to where um, you're not really the leader of the group, because, you know, you wouldn't want to be as a rogue unless that was just like your thing, um, but you are the uh, the voice or the face, like if, 
if you have to get information out of somebody or um, get them talking over a couple of ales or something like that, they would send you in instead of the paladin, who is the obvious leader of the group. It's like behind every paladin, there's a rogue waiting to do the talking. So it's kind of like that. Um, what else? There's the the dungeoneering rogue, obviously, is, is a whole different set of skills. You know, that's that's like use magic device, that's knowledge dungeoneering, engineering, disable device, climb, uh, maybe a praise. You know, the guy that's aware of his surroundings, especially when you're dungeon crawling, this is the guy that always picks the locks, disables the traps, you know, can can leap over the chasms and extend the drawbridge, you know, can, you know, the guy who's good when you're actually dungeon crawling. It's, it's the, the dungeoneering rogue, pretty much. Um, this is the more classic rogue in terms of, like, older versions of D&D, &D, and I say that with a very broad brush, because I know there's exceptions to everything in D&D, &D, depending on your setting. That, you know, if you were in D&D &D just to do dungeons and dragons, then a lot of people that rolled up rogues would roll up dungeoneering rogues, because that's what's going to be the most useful. You need to see all the traps. You're gonna be first, by the way. If you're a dungeoneering rogue because you have the high, you know, the trap sense, you're gonna have the ability to dodge. If a trap goes off, you've got the high reflex score to get out of the way. So most of the time, you know, instead of having like a sheep by a leash and like shooing it down a hallway bit by bit, they're gonna have you on a proverbial leash going down a hallway bit by bit looking for traps because you're the only one that can sense them beyond a certain difficulty. I think the threshold in Dungeons and Dragons is uh, 20. Like, if a, if a trap is hidden well enough beyond, like, a DC of 20, then nobody can see it except a rogue. Or it might be 15 or 20, but it's, it's somewhere in there. Beyond a certain threshold, only a rogue can see it because he has trap finding. And I'm sure you can take feats to see more difficult traps if you're not a rogue. But just in terms of just the class itself, rogues are the ones that are going to be looking for traps because beyond a certain threshold, nobody else can see them. So you're going to be going first. You know, if you step on the little tile that sinks in and get hit in the face with an arrow, then it's your own fault because the, the fighter is in the back covering everybody's rear. So um, what else? There's one more. We did... The face rogue, the dungeoneering rogue, the assassin rogue, and the con man rogue. Or no, the face rogue and the con man were the same thing. So I guess just there's three. There's there's more, you know, there's different types, but and there's there's archetypes in, in Pathfinder, but those are the main three. The the dungeoneer, the con man, and the assassin. There are, you know, variations on those, you know, alchemist you know, people that, that brew up poisons, put them on an arrow, and then shoot them across the way, but that could just as easily be a ranger, or, you know, things like that. The, the thing, the main thing about rogues, I said, you know, like, again, is, is their skills. They have so many skills. They're, they're basically an early bloomer kind of class. Like, you have to wait for a wizard to be awesome. You have to wait for a monk to be awesome. Rogues out the starting gate get like 40 plus hit points, okay armor, okay health, they can stealth, they can use most uh, common weaponry, you know, they, they specialize in getting more money over the other classes, they, you know, it's, it's, in terms of being by itself, actually it has the highest survivability because of all these freaking skills, you know, it's not about the combat, it's just skills, 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 because you've got... You've got, you know, not only can do you have class skills that cover almost everything, so you almost never have to spend double points to get ranks and things you don't have, because a rogue has almost everything, is that you can build these into any kind of character you want. It's almost like a fighter, except instead of having skills, fighters have feats, you know, so the rogue can be almost anything but his survivability when he's solo is paramount, or, or not paramount, but ideal compared to everyone else. Because, you know, if he falls down a hole, he can climb out. If he gets into a bar fight, he can talk his way out and or do extra damage. 
You know, if he gets poisoned, he might have alchemy or use magic device. If there's a trap ahead of him, he's gonna see it. You know, he's... Rogues cover so much. They are very complex. It's a very complex class that, you know, it's good to focus in on something so you know what kind of rogue you are, but the potential of a rogue is infinite because they cover almost every medium except for healing. You know, you can be a tank as a rogue if you want to. If your dexterity is high enough and you've got like, like dodge or, or blind, what is it, blind, blind sight or whatever it is, you can add to your armor until you're tanking not with armor but on like reflexes. You're just, you're just too quick to hit or you're too small to hit or you're, they can't pin you down. So, you know, they waste all of their attacks every time trying to hit you you know, while the wizard is shooting over your shoulder, or while while people are trying to break the door down, or whatever, whatever have you. Rogues can be almost anything. You just have to decide, like I've said in the past, you have to decide what kind of person this is. You know, are they the safe cracker? Are they the dungeoneer? Are they the con man? Are they an assassin? Etc. Etc. Decide what they are, and then you can stat it into a rogue, because rogues have almost everything. Um, in terms of Pathfinder, they actually did really, really well with the Rogue because in Pathfinder there are no dead levels. You always get, um, either a regular feat or a Rogue. It's called a Rogue Talent. And Rogue Talents, what, is, what does it say? As a Rogue gains experience, she learns a number of talents to aid her and confound her foes. Starting at second level, a Rogue gains one Rogue Talent. She adds an additional rogue talent every two levels of rogue attained after the second. So, you know, two, four, six, eight. They, they just get a new ability every time. You get a new toy to play with every other level. On top of all your skill points, on top of all your regular feats, on top of all the extra money you get, because rogues tend to find more money than everybody else. You know, and there's, there's some in here that are really, really specific. Like, um... Like the finesse rogue, a rogue that selects this talent gains weapon finesse as a bonus feat. Uh, ledge walker, this ability allows a rogue to move along narrow surfaces at full speed using the acrobatic skill without a penalty. In addition, a rogue with this talent is not flat-footed when using acrobatics along narrow surfaces. You know, like if they're running along a ledge, like a window ledge or a, a, a narrow pathway in a dungeon. Uh, trap Spotter. Whenever a rogue with this talent comes within 10 feet of a trap, she automatically receives an immediate perception skill check to notice the trap. This check should be made in secret by the GM. So anytime they even get close to a trap, they would see it. It's almost like an elf in a secret door. They just, they just know it's there, or they at least get a check to see if it's there. Um... You know, surprise attack. During the surprise round, opponents are always considered flat-footed to a rogue with this ability, even if they've already acted. You know, there's just, there's like 15 or 20 of these little rogue talents. All of them are, you know, specific things, um, and you can just flavor them towards yourself. The, uh, you know, rogue crawl. While prone, a rogue with this ability can move at half speed. This movement provokes attacks of opportunity as normal. A rogue with this talent can take a five-foot step while crawling. You know, there's just little, little specific things that might only come up once or twice, but it does flavor your rogue really nicely. Um, and there's regular things. You know, trap sense. Uh, a rogue gains intuitive sense that alerts her to danger from traps, giving her a plus one to reflex saves made to avoid traps, and plus one bonuses to AC against attacks made by traps. And this goes up plus two, plus three, plus four, and on and on. Um, uncanny dodge for higher armor, improved uncanny dodge. Um, their base attack bonuses are, are slower than the fighter, but better than the, than the wizard. Like, they start with plus zero, and then it just goes plus one, plus two, plus three, and then it, it stays at three for a bit, and then it stays at six for a couple levels, it stays at nine for a couple levels. So every couple of levels it stays at a, uh, it lo or it looks like every three levels. Every three levels it'll stick. So it's 
they're slow in terms of a base attack bonus, but the fact that you know a rogue excels in catching someone off guard, an attack bonus really isn't going to matter sometimes because. You know, if somebody doesn't get their dexterity score to their AC, then a lot of the times their armor is just going to go <laughs> because they don't know you're there. Um, where is the sneak attack? Yeah, and this is where a lot of confusion comes up with rogues, and I wanted to read this to you. It says, if a rogue can catch an opponent when he is unable to defend himself from her attack, she can strike a vital spot for extra damage. The rogue's attack deals extra damage any time her target would be denied a dexterity bonus to AC, whether the target actually has a dexterity bonus or not, or when the rogue flanks her target. So, no, World of Warcraft players, you do not have to be behind someone to make a sneak attack. This is not backstab. This is, you know, if you have your opponent and then two buddies on either side of your opponent, that person's flanked, you can sneak attack them in the face if you want to because they don't have their dexterity bonus, you know, and that includes if they're asleep, tied up, paralyzed, you know, some, some terms of slow, some terms of dazzled or confused where, um, where they lose that particular stat, you can just sneak attack them all day long, even if they're looking right at you. It's not... Sneak attack is probably not the best of names. It should be like Vital Strike, or it should be like, you know, not Coupe de Gras, but something similar to where, you know, it implies that you're doing more damage than normal, because sneak attack, you don't have to be behind them. You know, you, they could stare at you. There's nothing sneaky about it. Um... This extra damage is 1d6 at first level, increases 1d6 every two levels. Should the rogue score a critical hit with a sneak attack, the extra damage is not multiplied. Ranged attacks count as sneak attacks only if the target is within 30 feet. So, you know, if, you, if you're if you feeling brave and you shoot into melee, or if you, um, you know, if you're off to one side of a bandit camp and they're, you know, leaning over their food or something, they're not expecting it at all. You can shoot someone in the face or in the back when they're just not ready and it still counts as a sneak attack. You don't have to, you don't have to like melee somebody for it to be a sneak attack. Um, with a weapon that deals non-lethal damage like a sap or a whip, a rogue can make a sneak attack that deals non-lethal damage instead of lethal. She cannot choose a weapon that deals lethal damage to deal a non-lethal attack, not even with the penalty. A rogue must be able to see the target well enough to pick out a vital spot and must be able to reach such a spot. A rogue cannot sneak attack while striking a creature with concealment. So yeah, if they're invisible, yeah, you're not going to be able to do that. Or if they're like caught behind a curtain or anything like that, you have to be able to see your target in order to make to reach that like vital spot. Or if you're like a gnome or something, you're not going to reach up into somebody's heart or lungs. It might be a little harder for you to sneak attack. And yeah, you can you can garrote somebody's uh, tendons or whatever, but just in relative terms, it would be harder for you to reach that high. Um, a lot of the rogues that I've seen have been, um, just in terms of personal experience, have been dungeoneering rogues. They they care, you know, they see dungeons and dragons and they they rely a lot on their sneak attack and on their trap finding and that kind of just defined them as a character. I've only ever played a couple no, just one rogue actually. I played a a con man kind of rogue. I, I fenced off all of my stolen goods to people I knew and um I staged a uh what was it? Not a bar fight, but like a street fight to distract some guards with some guys I knew. I paid them off to just start punching each other to distract the guards. You know, there's, you know, out of the main three rogue types that I've run across in my times playing D&D &D and stuff, that was the main one that I had played as. Most of the, but most of the time, it's, it's usually the dungeoneering rogue because, you know, you don't want to sit at a table of, of buddies and be like, yeah, I'm playing a rogue, and then, you know, Three hours later, you're down in a dungeon, and somebody goes, pick the lock, rogue. And you're like, well, I didn't put points in disabled device. 
you know, I'm not that kind of rogue, or, you know, climb the wall, you know, it's like, I didn't put points in climb, I'm not that kind of rogue. There are a couple of things that you usually want to at least put a few points into, like, you know, disable device or, or bluff, things that kind of come with the territory regardless. Just that if you're going to have dungeons at all, then yeah, you need disable device. At least if you only put one point into it, at least you put one point in, because you've got so many. You may as well. Um, there's tons of archetypes that go into the... Um, the advanced player's guide, ultimate combat, things like this, but that help define it even further. But in terms of, of just straight up rogue, that's really all I can really think to talk about. There's only like three or four pages in here, and or maybe just like three and a half because of all the pictures. But um, make of rogues what you will, if only because they're easily the mo one of the most customizable ones out there. And yeah, you can design a wizard based on his spells, you can design a fighter based on his gear and his feats, but rogues out the starting gate have the biggest advantages, if only because they've got skills, skills, skills. They can be whatever the hell they want. You know, they can wear no armor and be, you know, the best tank out there based on their reflexes. You know, they can wear you know, leathers, they can wear like a lord's outfit and run around just talking his way, talking their way out of fights. You know, she could be an assassin that knows the noble, the, the inner workings of the noble families of the city well enough to know when to approach somebody to ask if they need somebody picked off for, you know, a nice sum of money, things like that. There are all different kinds of rogues. It's just, set it... Like, get the skill list that rogues get, because it's, I think it's almost all of them. Rogues only miss out on a couple of skills, at least in Pathfinder. And pick, like, six, you know, based on the character that you want to play as. Pick, like, six and focus on those, and you'll end up in probably one of the three or four, like, archetypes of rogues, and you'll be able to go from there and build a strong character. So... That's really, I guess, all I have to say about, like, straight rogues. There are, like I said, there are assassins, there are con men, there are buccaneers, and, you know, things that kind of stray close to bards, or things between bards and rogues, because they're kind of roguish characters, both of them. But, like, straight-up rogues, those, that's most of what I think about in terms of, of that particular class. So, I will see you guys on the next class class. So, until then, keep gaming.